President Rosenberg, that's a warning. Well, next is um, Florida International University. Thank you. Uh, Dick, sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I ran out of time, but I couldn't recognize you. That's okay. Okay. I don't think you guys want me to keep you until 7 o'clock. I know. That's fine. So, Kyle, like, not in. Yeah. So, this is going to be a forward? No, it's going to be a backward. We'll try it out right now, real quick. Make sure you're good. Yeah. Are you good back? I'm happy to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Yes. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, I'll actually move so it to the okay. center right there. Yeah. yeah. So you should just have to get like a prime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that dead? I was going to say, I heard that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it should be good. Okay. And uh, make sure your volume is. Hello, up. Debbie. It is. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and begin. If I could get everybody's attention, please. And. Um, Governors, we're going to work right through the break today. So if you have to, if you have to take a break or would like to step out, feel free. Yeah, President President Rosenberg, welcome. Yes, thank you, Governor. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your. And the buzzer is set, just a yes. warning, so nobody gets scared. <laughs> Please don't. I understand that. Uh, we are very pleased uh, from FIU to have a, uh, a large delegation, uh, two trustees, Claudia Puig and Gerald Grant, uh, four students, Lara Farina, Edekis Rodriguez, uh, Jose Chang, and Sarah Erickson, uh, my provost, uh, Douglas Wurzok, and, uh, and, uh, and our CFO, Ken Jessel. So thank you for your time. The, my theme this morning or this afternoon is that we get it, we get it, and we are focused. It's good. I would like to uh, begin by by pointing something out that I know you know, but that uh, we did have our board has paid close attention to your strategic plan, and before we. Uh, speak to that, I would la like to ask our board members uh, to speak for a moment uh, with you, as was suggested in the instructions to us. So we will begin with Trustee Claudia Puig. Hi. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you to this very distinguished group uh, this afternoon. And I just want to share, uh, as the President knows, I've been on the board now for quite a while. I think I started at the beginning uh, when the board was established. And I feel very passionate about FIU, and for me it's a very personal thing, and it, it, it goes back to my personal story. Uh, my mother was a young widow, uh, struggling with four children, and we didn't have FIU the way we know it today in the marketplace. So at the time she was, realized that she couldn't continue to struggle and support four children by herself. So she had no choice. She did, made a very smart decision, which was to further her education, and she moved us all. We were uprooted from our schools. She had to quit her job, and she had to go upstate to be able to get that education. So for me, I have lived a, a for me, FIU has a very, very per personal meaning. Uh, later, the same thing for me. Thank God my mother was able to get that education. She came back and became a teacher at Miami-Dade Community College. And because of that, she was able to help me pay my education. And at that time, FIU had three buildings. But it existed and it allowed me to go to FIU, and that meant the world to me. I probably would not have been able to get any education if it wasn't because I had to work and I had a child already. And uh, like me, there's many stories in Miami, and I, I live in awe at this, what FIU has become since I attended the university. I am very proud and, and uh, amazed at the work that they have done, that Mitch and now our President Rosenberg have accomplished with this university. And I know the community very well. I'm very entrenched in that community, and I understand personally the need that our community faces every day and the challenges that it has. And I'm also living the experience of what FIU means to that community, the role that it's playing right now, uh, the economic impact that it has, and, I, and I'd like to ask this board to please, when they look at each university, to look at the uniqueness of FIU, the life cycle, where it is in its life cycle, what it means to that community, the economic impact that it has, and the demand for access. 
uh, that that particular community has. Uh, I can't stress enough or urge all of you to please consider, and I agreed with a lot of the things the governor said today, and I understand what we're all trying to achieve here, and I, my heart goes out to all of you because I know what a tough decision it is, but we had a unanimous vote of the 15% increase because we all understand the demand for access there is and the, and the tremendous need that our community has and the huge role that FIU plays there. So thank you, and uh, hope you will keep that in mind as you deliberate. Thank, thank you. you. Trustee Grant. My name is Gerald Grant. I'm Director of Financial Planning for Axe Advisors in South Florida and recently appointed to the Foundation Board of Trustees. I would like to thank the Board of Governors for approving my appointment. I grew up in Miami. FIU provided an opportunity for me to attend college. When I graduated from high school in 1973, I could not afford to go to University of Miami. The only option that was available was to go to Miami-Dade College for two years, and without the existence of FIU, I would not be able to continue my education. I realized the value of that, and I've given back to the university. Since for the past 18 years, I have served on the, as president of the Alumni Association, I then served on the President's Council of 100, I recently served for about eight years on the board of, the board of the Foundation Board of Directors and recently appointed to the Board of Trustees. But without FIU, none of this would have been possible. And it is a given life where we can be productive citizens in, in, in the state and give back to university. FIU provide access to undeserving students. If, if it wasn't for FIU, there was no other affordable way of going to school. And I'd like you to thank you for your continued support, giving us the opportunity to grow the university and provide access for students. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, trustees. Uh, members of the board, uh, we get it, we're focused. We want to start out by, by pointing to you that your own strategic plan on page 15 calls for increased access and degree completion for students, including students from traditionally underrepresented groups. You also call on your strategic plan for increased student access and success in degree programs in the STEM fields and other areas of strategic emphasis. We, we say this because our board has taken this mandate uh, very seriously, uh, particularly the access challenge, which as I mentioned to the chair of your board yesterday, access on, is mentioned on page six of your strategic plan five times as a key driver uh, for what we should be doing uh, in the state university system. And our board has taken that seriously. Briefly, inside the numbers, we will graduate approximately 10,800 students for 2012-2013. We will enroll for 2012-2013 uh, 50,000 students. We do have the third highest Hispanic six-year graduation rate in the country. Uh, it could be higher, but it's the third highest, and it's moving upwards. We have the fourth highest Hispanic first-year retention rate of 82 percent, and we lead the nation in Hispanic STEM degrees in 2010 and 11, and our plan will allow us to continue to lead the nation uh, in this critical indicator that was uh, referenced a little bit more uh, generally uh, by our governor the, the, this morning. I also want to point out that since 2006, we've had a surge in applications of nearly 46 percent. So insofar as customers being interested in the product that we are offering, uh, regardless of the price, we've seen nearly an exponential increase in the demand for access uh, to FIU, and we're trying to respond uh, to that. As well, we've accounted for nearly 30 percent of the enrollment growth in the state university system since 2006-2007. The context. South Florida does lead the state in job growth. We'd like to be more, even more robust than we are, but we know that our community plays a leading role in generating those jobs that the governor spoke to. Indeed, our Miami-Dade County Public Schools is responding to the challenge. Advanced placement rates there are growing. Miami-Dade Community College, our partner, our key partner, their graduates have increased by 65% by 
since 2006, 2007, and Miami-Dade College AA transfers to FIU increased by 46% in that same period of time. Our community recently did a year-long a strategic study on how we can improve the job situation in Miami. I believe you have the documents uh, in front of you. Our university responded to one community, one goal, and in particularly six sectors of strategic growth. We have developed our own plan to ensure that we are very much in sync with the job creating initiatives that are taking place in our community. We're proud of this strategic plan for our community because it responds to those six sectors with specific and concrete steps that we're going to take to help new jobs to be created. We get it, we're focused, and this, this new strategic plan from One Community, One Goal, in many ways, is a blessing for us because it helps us to understand exactly what our community needs. Efficiencies. We get it. Uh, we, we dismissed or closed positions for 59 faculty in the last few years and 75 staff. We closed full, four full academic departments, academic departments that were functioning but that we felt were not at the quality where they should be and the faculty were walked from those, from those positions. In addition, we closed a number of centers and institutes. We also restructured our academic curricula. We'll talk about that in a moment. We obviously had to renegotiate contracts. We initiated energy efficiency programs and redefined a number of business models. And I'm particularly uh, proud of the, of the energy efficiency. We lead the state university system in energy efficiency. Our electric bill is $10 million annually. If we were consuming electricity at the average of the SUS, it would be $25 million. And we're very proud of that, of the re-engineering that we've done to ensure that we can save uh, through energy efficiency. FIU also has the top space utilization in the state university system. By your standards, we are 175% of statutory uh, requirements. We're the second highest student faculty ratio, 28 to 1. That's a good efficiency measure. Uh, we're the lowest in the, uh, of the percentage in the state university system of classes under 30 students. We are the third lowest in terms of cost uh, uh, per FTE and in terms of e, uh, the cost per degree. So I would submit to you that in terms of efficiency, another dimension of your strategic plan that is also mentioned five times on page seven, uh, I would submit to you that, that you have a, a very competitive mix of access and efficiency uh, as well as excellence. Another dimension of our, of our initiatives is that we started a, a winter mini semester uh, in, the, in the break. Uh, we do not close during the Christmas holidays. The university stays open. And during that period of time, we offer bottleneck classes to students who will take their Christmas day, their holiday vacation, and study. Uh, that last year was a prototype. We had 500 students. We're very pleased with that. The governor mentioned starting salaries. We're second in the state university system in the average annual wages. Uh, in the first year after graduation, roughly $39,000. And in terms of the percentage of baccalaureate degree students who are employed uh, after graduation, we're fourth in the state university system with 66%. Student debt has increased. I don't like that. I'm very unhappy with that. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you we're still the second lowest in the, in the state university system. What is our focus? What, what are we asking you for? First of all, we're going to talk about an aggressive alignment of graduates with employment opportunities. Second, increased attention to performance-oriented math and writing skills. Third, uh, more science offerings to deepen our role in STEM uh, leadership. And fourth, we're very pleased to talk about the increasing number of student internships that we'll be able to, we're able to provide to our students to provide grounded work experience for them. We, as, as, to wish, as Trustee Puig mentioned, members of the board, we are requesting a 15% tuition differential. Here's what we're going to do with that. We're going to improve our graduation rates to 47%. We're going to expand STEM education. We're going to hire, as a matter of fact, we've already hired 38 new faculty, 15 advisors, two writing instructors, and 10 academic support staff. We can quantify what is happening with our students' resources. 
We're going to continue the 30% need-based uh, commitment. Nearly 7,000 students will receive tuition differential scholarships. And here with me today is Laura Farinas, who's a member of our Board of Trustees and the President of our Student Government, and she will speak to the tuition differential. Hello. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Board, for having me. Um, in assessing the student perspective as far as the 15% differential increase, I think it's important to state, uh, at going with the theme, that we also get it. Um, students at FIU are committed to maintaining and if not increasing the quality and integrity of our degree. And I believe that students are willing to reinvest back into their education knowing what we're getting for our money. Um, I also think it's important that if not the students, someone invests. And I think the university and the administration is doing an amazing job in uh, reallocating resources and doing the best with the situation that we have. And as far as the student body, I am privileged enough to be the uh, student body president at FIU. And like the president said, we get it. And students yeah. are committed as well to, uh, to this work plan and, and the strategic plan and the vision of the board. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Trustee. My first meeting with the governor uh, after he became our governor, one of the first questions he asked me was, uh, how, do you, how do our students know where the job opportunities are? Uh, we took that very seriously, and indeed you heard him say today, let our students know where the jobs are. Let me ask my provost to, to share with you what we've done over the last year and a half to get at that uh, for the benefit of our students. Okay, um, let me just quickly walk you through what the students see when they're thinking about first coming to FIU. Uh, they uh, can select their major. If they're not sure about what their major is going to be, they can get more information on any uh, particular degree, searching in any particular uh, area or by campus or browsing degrees in general. But when they then choose one, if they hover the uh, cursor over any of these, it gives you a quick indication of what's involved in that particular major and uh, we'll pick biomedical engineering and then there's much more of a program description admissions requirements career opportunities talking about completion rates there's a degree map for a two-year transfer completion and a four-year uh, first time in college completion tells you how much the job uh, average salaries are within the state and nationally and what the projected growth is and gives you contact information at the university Further information is live from the uh, federal government that uh, then gives much more in-depth information that we're scrolling through very rapidly here on biomedical engineering. Uh, provides all the information a student know, would need. In addition, again, talks about what the uh, wages are, what the positions are, and then they can go for even more in-depth information by clicking on Florida and looking at the information that's again provided there, including a video of what uh, biomedical engineers do, again uh, highlighting what the uh, salaries are and what the job growth potential is in that particular field. And the same is true for every one of the majors the students might uh, think about uh, enrolling in. So this software is, an, any student who applies to FRU has to go through this to get to the application. So we feel very strongly that this is a very positive step in the right direction for making sure that our students are fully aware of where the jobs are, where the opportunities are. Uh, this uh, initiative is part of our graduation success initiative and uh, it's part of a, a number of innovations that our tuition differential uh, will be helping us to enhance this year. We also, I'm happy to report to you, uh, last year, Ex expanded our algebra program with a pilot, we improve our pass rates by 15%. We believe that as we continue to implement this new initiative, that that particular bottleneck will disappear uh, over the next few years. And um, we, we also, in terms of the graduation success initiative, uh, have initiated a, what we call Teach for STEM Miami. We're collaborating with the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I don't have the time to talk to you about how deep that collaboration is, but over the next five years, we will provide an additional 200 new teachers who are specifically trained in STEM disciplines. How are we gonna do that? Our intent is to hire 24 additional STEM faculty in 2012-2013 to augment 
the 45 incremental STEM faculty we've hired over the last five years. And I'm very pleased to report to you that as one of the results of that initiative to enhance graduation success in the STEM area, that we uh, today have 199 physics majors, which is a doubling of the number of physics majors we had uh, from 2006, 2007. One of those physics majors is here with us today, Edekis Rodriguez. We want to show you a short video uh, that tells the story about Edekis. I was later than raised in Miami. Once we reached here, we saw the lights. It was Key West. Uh, I think it was a military base. Yeah. I think we want to start it at the beginning since we didn't have the sound up. I'm originally from Cuba. I was born and raised there until I was seven years old and came over um, by boat, a uh, fisherman's boat actually, um, in 1992. So I was seven and I was later than raised in Miami. Once we reached here, we saw the lights. It was Key West. Uh, I think it was a military base down by Key West. And, uh, and everybody was overjoyed. My name is Yudaikis Rodriguez, and I'm a fourth year PhD uh, graduate uh, student um, in the physics department. I do physics education research and focus on um, developing a physics identity in graduate students. Rodriguez graduated top of her class and chose to attend FIU. Soon after arriving, she met Professor Dr. Laird Kramer. Meeting Dr. Kramer and engaging in the community that he had built uh, for the physics majors was a great opportunity to me. I asked myself why there wasn't any more people, Hispanic physicists or scientists for that matter. Working together with the physics uh, education group here made me realize that I could ask those questions, particularly in research and decided to not only give back by teaching and targeting those minority groups like me, but uh, asking the question as to why. Today, Rodriguez teaches modeling classes, which are a drastic departure from the more traditional lecture classes students are accustomed to. Hands-on experiments and demonstrations take center stage, and students have embraced the technique. In the 20 years since a fishing boat came ashore off Florida's coast, Rodriguez has traveled far. But she says her journey isn't over yet. Hopefully within five years maybe, um, possibly be at a university um, continuing my research and teaching physics um, and helping students like minority students like myself reach their goals. So we have Edekis Rodriguez here with us this afternoon and she'd like to speak to you. Uh, thank you President and uh, thank you board for having me here and giving me the opportunity to share my experience that I've had at FIU. I'm proud, to, I'm proud to stand by our president in making FIU a leader in STEM education initiatives. And as you will hear him, um, he will comment further on the amazing STEM programs uh, and research that have made direct impact on our students. Um, for me specifically, being a part of the STEM education research community at FIU um, has led me to grow and uh, promote FIU beyond borders and uh, represent them at this year's Nobel Prize winners in physics conference in Germany next month and uh, goes to show you that um, that we do great work at FIU. Thank you. Thank you, Dacus. Dacus is part of a broader uh, STEM success initiative that really puts the emphasis on finding ways to restructure our courses to get our students more actively involved. That STEM success initiative has different components, one of which is that we've, we've partnered with FAU to create Life Sciences South Florida, an alliance of, of, of life science programs, both public and private, as well as state colleges, economic development officers, to identify where workforce opportunities are for training as well as advanced research through sharing equipment. Very proud to tell you that Life Sciences South Florida is now nearly two years old and is, is, is robust. It's a robust effort for the first time to bring together uh, life science programs throughout the, uh, throughout the South Florida area. We also, uh, Mr. Chair, spend a sig significant amount of time uh, working with our students who do excel to get them to, thank you, to get them to uh, 
to get them to use their understanding of uh, STEM areas to teach fellow students. We have over 400 student mentors now as part of our peer-led team leadership. Jose Chang is one, and Jose will speak to you briefly about what our STEM, our graduation success initiative and our STEM initiative have enabled him to do as someone who's studying in the STEM area. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Very briefly, thank you, members of the board, for having me. Um, yes, I've been in this program for five semesters now since fall 2010, and I just, I'm really happy to be here to really celebrate FIU's uh, uh, services and the opportunities that they extend to students like myself, uh, minority students. Uh, PLTL being one of those, and um, I'm just happy to say that because of FIU, because of this program, it's inspired me to pursue a degree in STEM. Right now I'm leaning towards a PhD MD in some sort of field in neuroscience, and hopefully that'll happen soon, but FIU has definitely played a big part in this decision. So we do get it. Thank you, Jose. Our STEM focus doesn't just uh, 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 reside in our curriculum, which we're proud of, but it also is a function of the research that we are carrying out. So just let me give you three quick, share with you three quick case studies. Uh, two of our faculty, Sakra Kisroff and Mata Vanir, are doing pathbreaking research on Parkinson's using electromagnetic uh, nanoparticles to improve treatment of patients with Parkinson's disease. We believe that this has significant potential to transform how this significant malady, uh, how it can be remediated. We're very pleased that four of our students are working with our professors in this initiative. A second initiative that I want to point to, I'm happy to tell you, was, was a cover story of the New York Times Magazine just a few weeks ago. Our research uh, team, led by Dr. Dan Washbush, studying, have a three-year study on callous, unemotional children who are at risk of developing aggressive, antisocial behavior as adults. Uh, their pathbreaking research is now the topic of this New York Times Magazine story. But more importantly, from our viewpoint of our commitment to undergraduate STEM education, 184 undergraduate students are working directly in this project, uh, 84 at FIU uh, and 84 at non-state university system partners. We're very pleased about that. And finally, as a component of what we're doing in the STEM area, uh, one of our associate professors in biomedical engineering, uh, Anurata Godavardi, uh, and her research team have invented a device to aid in the detection of breast cancer. And here to talk about that very briefly is one of the graduate students involved in this initiative, Sarah Erickson. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about our handheld optical imaging technology. Optical imaging uses near-infrared light at wavelengths between 650 and 900 nanometers, which penetrate deep into the tissue. This can be demonstrated very simply if you close your eyes and face a bright white light source such as the sun. The only color you will see is red because red and near-infrared pass through the tissue. This deep tissue information gives functional information about physiological changes within biological tissues. So we have developed a device that does not use any X-ray radiation. It's completely harmless to the tissue. And it can be made very portable, and it is relatively inexpensive, which is particularly useful in low- and mid-income resource regions where women often don't even get uh, examinations. Um, breast cancer is a very important aspect because one in eight women are at risk of developing it in their lifetime. It affects everybody. And the mortality rate has been decreasing, which is very good, and this is largely due to early detection due to better imaging technologies. At FIU, we have developed a handheld optical imager. We currently have three generations of the device and five patents. This device works similar to an ultrasound probe on the breast tissue. It's non-invasive, and it does not require compression like X-ray mammography. And here 
in these images, you can see we have imaged five breast cancer patients to date. This shows one sample case where a female, 51 years old, had invasive ductal carcinoma in two locations. And we place our probe on the breast tissue and we are able to see the information from the tumor. So this was a very exciting result to show the potential of our technology. Currently, we are working on a third generation ultra portable system where the instrumentation can fit in the size of a computer case. So it's essentially an imager in a bag. So this is able to adapt to different tissue shapes. It is operator independent, and it allows for both reflectance and transmittance in imaging, which gives uh, deep, uh, deep tissue information. So this has potential applications as a pre-screening tool to determine if a woman needs a mammogram or not. It can be used to monitor response to chemotherapy treatment. It can also has potential use in intraoperative settings. And also, apart from breast cancer, there's other applications such as on-site on sport, sports injuries and arthritis imaging in fingers. So um, this work is performed by all the members of our optical imaging laboratory, which for the past eight years has involved 32 undergraduate students, 15 graduate students, three doctoral students, and four postdoctoral researchers, as well as our other university and industry collaborators. And also, we would like to thank our funding sources, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sarah. We're particularly hopeful for this technology because our research, our medical school, that our medical school is doing in the low-income neighborhoods in North Miami, where we are, where they are permanently located, indicate that of the women uh, who have uh, stage four breast cancer in those low-income neighborhoods, fully 56 percent have never had a mammogram. So this, uh, this, these handheld devices can have a path-breaking impact uh, in, in our community. Finally, internships. Uh, we believe that uh, internships are critical to student success. Uh, we're very happy to tell you that we have been able to initiate a major internship program with Florida Power and Light. They have opened a call center right on our campus where 27 of our best and brightest and most promising students get practical opportunities. 17 have already been accepted for permanent positions. Uh, about eight of those are on fast track management positions. But we've also initiated internship programs on scale with Sotheby's International, Miami-Dade County, Jackson Health System, and a major high tech, uh, global high tech manufacturer in South Florida who we're not yet really ready to, to publicize, but in a couple weeks we will. Uh, we provided internships to over 2,000 students in 2011 2012, including uh, we just uh, opened up our internship program in Washington for 40 student interns. So we get it. Uh, it's about uh, efficiencies. Uh, it's about our uh, STEM initiative. It's about our graduation success initiative. And here's the return on investment. Chronicle of Higher Education, we pointed this out to the board last year, uh, 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 wrote a story just at the end of last year story said that the story of Florida Interna International's growth to date offers a case study of what other mid-sized public research universities and their legislative patrons aspire to do. Expand scientific research and educate a lot more students despite tight finances. I'm also proud to tell you that we're listed in the top 100 universities in the world under 50 years old by the Times Higher Education. Uh, we're 84. There are only nine. We're one of only nine in the United States. We're the only university in Florida, or one of two <coughs> serving institutions uh, on, that, on that list. We expect to increase our graduation rate to 47% in 2012-2013. We expect to increase the number of STEM degrees to about 1,693 and STEM <coughs> degrees, uh, and, and we expect to expand the number of Hispanic STEM degrees as well. Uh, our research expenditures are showing a 49% increase. We believe that positive trend will, uh, will continue. And our, and our doctoral research uh, degrees awarded uh, has had a 68% increase over the last four years. Our focus then for this coming year, uh, with your support, will be a, a, an aggressive alignment of our students with employment opportunities an increase in the number of STEM graduates and a deepening of our role in national STEM leadership, particularly for minority students. We'll enhance the student internship opportunities for practical experience and job readiness 
and we expect to implement, continue to implement efficiencies to ensure that our customers, our students, know that they're getting a value product. That concludes my report, Mr. Chair, members of the board. You do have in front of you a brochure that we did on STEM education, a one-on-one -on -one community, one goal, and one on our partnership with the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Thank that, you for your that, time. Thank you. Um, questions, comments? Yes? Governor. Thank you for that uh, presentation. It's, it's very impressive. And uh, I try to remain unbiased, but having formally served uh, on the board down at FIU, I, I have a hard time doing that. But uh, I hope you'll indulge me, uh, even with my biases, to ask a question or two. Sure. Uh, and I don't mean for this to come across negative. So it's purely a question as I'm looking at the, at the numbers. There's a lot of numbers in these documents. Yes. And, yeah, and so I have really two paths I want to travel down quickly. One is on the summary of improving metrics. Yes. And, and I just couldn't help but notice if you look from 2005, 6 to today, uh, that the university has improved at the lowest rate uh, of the metrics of all the universities. And so I guess I'm, I'm just interested in, in your reaction or addressing that, but also uh, and I, I know the answer, but I'd pose it anyway. How uh, fair would it be, almost from an incentive perspective, to in some way connect uh, tuition increases to improvements in, in the key metrics? So that, that would be one. And then I'll just tell you the other one. You could probably do them both at the same time. Back on my efficiency quest here. Sure. Yeah. It looks like uh, your university has also gone the wrong direction in terms of uh, spending a lesser percentage of total expenses on instruction and research. And, and it's very impressive, all, all of the references to efficiency on plant operations and maintenance, but in the case of the university, it's gone from 10.96% of expenses to 12.78%. And so it, it's impressive to hear it, but the numbers sort of point you in another direction. So those are two different roads I'm traveling down, but maybe you could address both of them. The latter, uh, we added about a uh, little under half a million square feet of operation during that period of time. And, uh, and uh, that's fortunately, it's not fully funded, but it gets its full funding. And so uh, we believe that that accounts for that, that change. Uh, as it relates to your first question, uh, the, the focus that we have is on figuring out a way with the resources that we have and with our demographics to improve. And so therefore, we recognize that our uh, graduation rate is not as high as we would like it, that our first to second year retention rate, while very high by urban university standards, uh, could be higher. And that's precisely what we're proposing to do with the differential is to invest so that our students have an opportunity to graduate uh, in a more timely manner uh, in the focused areas that the board has identified. Uh, we, as an institution, have a significantly higher percentage of, of uh, community college transfers and transfers than, uh, than most of our other peers within the state. That's part of our urban mission. We also have, uh, it's hard to calculate, we get different stories, but a significant percentage of our students work such that our uh, juniors, on average, take 11.8 student credit hours, largely because they are working full or part-time jobs, which does, if you will, impede a more rapid and accelerated um, uh, 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 graduation. Matter of fact, I would guess that many of the, of the employees who, when you were on our board, were at Sun Bank, were also uh, uh, attending FIU part-time or full-time so that they could get their uh, education. Sure. Where F fair we, or unfair on the connecting of improvement uh, over a period of time to the granting of tuition increases? Well, I'd say during that period of time, we took about an $80 million cut in our budget. We, we laid off uh, uh, nearly 150 people who were providing uh, services. Um, and yet we managed to increase uh, the number of courses that we were teaching by increasing the workload. We managed to increase the class size. We kept our doors open. We did not walk students, and we had a surge in applications. Uh, so um, 
we could follow a different route and close ourselves down to the community, reduce the number of applicants, and jam up our metrics. I promise you that could happen. Mm -hmm. And we, as you heard Trustee Puig say and Trustee Grant say, that probably is not consistent with our mission. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Governor Perez. Mr. President, two, two questions, and thanks for the presentation. It was uh, insightful. Um, two questions. First, the, the only real troubling metric that I have in your report is your first-time pass rate on professional exams. Um, that is a bit of a challenge. What explains that, and how is it that you're going to make that change? Your aspirational goal is obviously 4 and 0, oh, um, but you were 2 and 2, 2 and 2, and then 3 and 1, it looks like, is your goal for this year, 4 and 0 oh, subsequent years. How are you going to drive that change, and what, what is the cause of that, the root of that problem, that it's changeable in a two-year period? Uh, let me, uh, you know, presidents like to give the good news, and I'll let the provost give the bad news. Uh, <laughs> I think that's perfectly fair, Mr. President. That's okay, but the good news is we're particularly proud of our, of our, of our College of Law Bar Passage, which traditionally is one, two, or three, you know, in, in the state. It's a, this board, a year, its predecessor board years ago, uh, uh, looked at this and said we shouldn't have a College of Law. We eventually did establish a College of Law, and now we're, we're right at the top. We're very proud to tell you. So this is doable, and I'll, tell you, I'll ask the provost to tell you what we're doing to improve the passage rates. Yes, um, we have uh, hired uh, new chairs in both of those departments, uh, and they have uh, plans in place to uh, make significant improvements. Uh, as you uh, probably recall, um, this board uh, last year approved our ability to uh, provide uh, test uh, charges for tests and uh, you provided, you, you gave the authority in a broad category for wherever a professional uh, pass was required in order to uh, practice in the field and so that we have the opportunity of also uh, allowing our uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy students, which are the two uh, ones that are currently below the national average, uh, to uh, take those tests, but right now the two new uh, department chairs are convinced that with the curricular changes they're putting in place, uh, that won't be necessary and the students will be uh, in a very good position to pass the uh, examinations on the schedule that's laid out uh, in, our, uh, in our work plan. Okay. Uh, one more question, Mr. President. Looking at your, and you've got a very strong focus on STEM, it certainly seems yes. in your presentation, your 2014-2015 goal moves the needle 1%. Yeah. Now, I understand that you have an incredibly diverse student population, many of whom are Hispanic, and your physics professor made it clear that Hispanic students are not focusing on STEM courses or mathematics courses. Is that the reason that we've got a 1% growth with the obvious emphasis you're putting on it? Is it the makeup of the student body? Is it, is, is, is it challenges you're trying to overcome? Because, I, I, again, your, your Latino graduation rates are stellar, they're strong, and, you know, I'm no good at math. If I'm a shock group of one, I understand that. We don't like STEM. That's not us. There are, uh, first of all, our, we do expect to grow, so the percentage, actually the absolute number would increase, but the growth as a percentage might not uh, look as robust. But second of all, uh, there are some bottlenecks that we are trying to address. First with the Miami-Dade County Public Schools, we have an aggressive initiative in dual enrollment. It's an initiative that uh, we are attempting to improve STEM education in the 51 high schools that exist in Miami-Dade County Public Schools through dual enrollment. The challenge that we have there is there are not enough laboratories in the Miami-Dade County Public Schools that are approved, that have accreditation at the SACS level. So we're asking them to enhance their laboratories. Second of all, we have a bottleneck within the institution itself in that we do not have enough instructional, la instructional labs so that, for instance, we are already teaching all of our, our, our biology laboratory classes on Saturday going from 8 in the morning till about 10 at night, and we're on the cusp of beginning Sunday instruction to try to eliminate that bottleneck. We need to build more uh, instructional labs. We're very confident that the, that the faculty have taken the very significant steps to restructure the curriculum. The issue is there are still components that are lagging 
and we are working on those related to bottlenecks. Um, Committee member Chairman Colson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a, a couple of things. One, I want to compliment you on your building efficiency numbers. I mean, that, that was, those are impressive numbers. It seems to me that, that um, one of the things I always hear from people is, yeah, but are they going, are, is anybody going to class on Friday morning? And, um, and, and we do a lousy job of, of, of explaining that, yeah, our kids go to class on Friday mornings. Um, you know, now, I have a son in college, and I assure you he doesn't go to class on Friday morning. <laughs> so, um, but, but I, um, I think we need to do a better job on explaining how we're using these buildings for, you know, 24 hours a day, no, not literally, but seven days a, a, a week. Um, and are your kids going to class on Friday morning? We, we bit that bullet several years ago. Uh, let me say that we are offering classes on Friday morning. <laughs> but, but, but yes, if you, if you look at our, if you look at our uh, class schedule, uh, it is true that on Friday the number of classes during the day is probably 10% less than what it is in terms of the other four days of the regular week. Uh, so there are somewhat fewer, but, but not uh, a lot fewer. Uh, there are um, significantly fewer classes on Friday night. Uh, but then again, as the president said, it picks up again on Saturday morning. So uh, we are um, forcing as many opportunities as possible upon the students to uh, make that choice. Okay. Let me ask the president to comment on my earlier comments that I assume you heard with President Hitt. I think a goal of 47 percent six-year graduation rate is not high enough. I, I, I don't know what's fair for an urban public university. Uh, I, I think I got John, President Hitt to say maybe 70 percent um, for an urban university is a, but it seems to me we've got to get you all to set a goal and it's got to be a, a lot higher than 47 percent and we've got to, um, you know, you've got to tell us what the resources you need to get there and we've got to tie the two together. And, and do you have any comment on what the goal should be? I agree with you completely that we, that we do need to raise that. We kick that around a lot at the university, and again, given our demographics and the predilections of our students, where even our best students, by the time they're juniors, are down to 11.8 credit hours. And so um, that, there are certain structural dimensions of uh, the demographics in our community that a lot of people work, and they do not intend to graduate any more rapidly than than five years or six years. Having said that, um, if we were to close off, if we were to abandon our classes at night on both of our campuses, uh, we could increase our graduation rate. Uh, if we were to reduce our, our admissions to academically qualified, to fewer academically qualified students, we could raise our graduation rate, no doubt. But in answer to your question, I'd like to see it uh, in the high 50s within the next uh, decade uh, or less. Um, and I think it's doable. The plan that we have is a plan that is very sensible, that allows us to grow, to grow with academic qualified students. But as well, if you go through the data, you can see that we've hired a lot of student advisors. We never had student advisors at FIU until the last few years. Uh, we did not have the intrusive advising system that we do today. Each institution has followed its own rhythm of growth and expansion, and um, we're confident that we can get those numbers up uh, higher than what they are, no question. I have two other quick things, Mr. Mr. Chair, if that's all right. Um, one, of your, one of your future programs is if you would like to start a college of pharmacy, I see. Yeah, it's on there, yes, sir. Okay, is that any time? That, that we expect to see that in, the, let's say, the next 18 months while I'm chairman of the board of the governor. So. Why you're chairman? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I would, I, for example, I see that as a three-year horizon as opposed to an 18-month horizon. <laughs> we, uh, uh, it's, it's on there, I believe it says 2015. Uh, it's an aspirational objective. It responds to the same market forces that were, you know, asked to be considerate of. And, uh, but it's an aspirational objective. Okay, and my last, my last question is, I remember 
reading the Miami Herald one morning with my coffee with a headline that says, FIU to increase enrollment, 20,000 students. Um, it, I look at your numbers here, and they, look, they appear to have been reduced some. Um, um, and so can you comment on that change? Uh, we, our board approved a plan uh, several years ago that called for uh, additional access, if you will. And um, in part as a response to the surge in applications that we had of academically qualified students. Uh, we have, uh, based upon the current situation, uh, based upon our uh, going forward, our, uh, uh, our projections, we have uh, scaled back that growth so that essentially for the next two years, it will be flat. However, we have already admitted our class for next year, which is consistent with the, the BOT and the BOG strategic plan. So our expectation is to hold growth at the level that we are for 2013 for 1314, which is consistent with your observation that we are definitely slowing it down. Thank you. Governor Temple. Yeah, you said you have like five doctoral programs that are gonna come before this board sometime not in the near future, but part of your plan. Can you kind of just tell us what those are? You know, um, as, uh, as the president noted, we, we're not having any, and as you, you just said, uh, Governor, that we're not uh, proposing any in, the, in this work plan. But uh, in the future, we are looking at uh, one in the administration of justice. Uh, we've, um, we, we graduate. Um, not only hundreds of undergraduate degrees every year in that, but hundreds of uh, master's degrees as well. And um, so we have the faculty and we have the need uh, for uh, a graduate program in that area. Um, in terms of creative writing, uh, we, as uh, you may know, one of our professors uh, this year uh, won a um, Guggenheim Award in, his, in creative writing, uh, and uh, another one won the uh, uh, the gold uh, award in the state for his poetry and another poet is a uh, MacArthur Fellow. So uh, we have a very strong program in creative writing and uh, it is a program in which uh, the MFA is a perfectly good degree for uh, individuals who are planning to become creative writers but for uh, individuals who are thinking about combining a career as a creative writer and a faculty member then uh, having the PhD is a entree into uh, other universities. Um, you know, linguistics, um, we are in a unique, such a unique area where um, the majority of our um, population is bilingual. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for us to take a leadership role in a linguistics program that would be particularly focused on bilingual. We're looking at uh, a, a PhD in mathematics because that's the only one within the STEM areas where we do not have a PhD program, and as I think most of the uh, Board of Governors are, are aware, uh, mathematics is indeed the foundation of all the sciences, and so that it's somewhat of a uh, missing uh, piece that we do not have the PhD in mathematics, and uh, the President has addressed pharmacy. Uh, and then one, just one real quick one. On your vote on, uh, I meant to ask this for the last presentation, on, on your vote on the tuition increase, it, was it unanimous? including the students? Yes, it was unanimous and further the board chair wanted to be noted for the record that there is a significant concern with our board about the use of reserves as operating and the fact that we were running like every other university very, very lean for this year. Thank you. Um, Governor Frost, are you on the phone? Is she still on? It's Pat Frost. May I ask the president some questions, please? Yeah, hi, Pat. Uh, um, we just wanted to welcome you. I didn't know you were on before. I just got a note. Um, did, did, you, yes, did you? Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. I said hi, John, but you were so busy. Uh, I was busy. It's a <laughs> tough crowd to take care of here. <laughs> I know um, it is. I know. And it must be a full audience. I apologize for not being there for this important, important meeting. But I have a few questions to ask the president of FIU, and I did appreciate the previous report too. First of all, as the board there knows and 
the president there knows I'm very upset with the huge increase in the number of young people who are attending regardless of their ethnic background or their needs for working day, night, etc. when they only have 47% actually finishing in a reasonable time. But I have a few questions. First of all, where it says not a resident of Florida, I don't see in, this, in these facts, these numbers, anything about the school that they have in China, which is probably one of their best schools here on campus, which is the hospitality management. I'm only asking that question because I'm assuming that those students there are paying non-Florida resident tuition, which should help the budget for FIU. So I don't see that added, but maybe that's not important. But what really bothers me a little bit is to see the increase in medical students year after year after year. We originally approved a program there for 80 students. It was supposed to be Florida residents. You took in no non-residents. Now I see projecting for this year 141 medical students and non-residents 26, totaling 167 students. But you are going all the way up to almost 480 students. I don't think we have been presented with the residency program that would accommodate this number of students. And uh, for those of you who do follow the Miami Herald, at least, we have a few problems in the city of Miami with some of our hospitals, medical schools, et cetera, et cetera. I just would like to know, before we approve this, that there are residency programs for these young people coming in to the medical school at FIU. I'm a little disappointed that we went from 80 now to 167, but we're on our way up to 480. That does concern me. Okay, th thank you, Governor Frost. Yes. Uh, our uh, incoming class, our incoming class next year will be 120 students. It's the first time we'll have a full class. This is what we put on the budget uh, from our inception. Uh, we will also have 40 graduates next year. It will be our first graduating class. Each of those 40, we expect we'll have residencies available to them that are new residencies that have been established by our affiliate institutions in, uh, in Florida. Now, whether or not they take those residencies in, in Florida will be a function of, of the match, uh, which we do not control, which is controlled centrally, nationally. But we'll have residencies for every new student who is graduating into the into the uh, the marketplace, even if it's not the case that there will be a one-to-one -one, uh, location of those graduates with the residencies here in state, but we're right on schedule in terms of what we had, what the board had approved uh, uh, in 2006 in terms of the admissions, and we're not going any higher than 120. That's not what's indicated on your chart. You have on your chart plan for 2013. You're going up to Florida residents 320. You're going to be adding one after another, after another, after another. Is that what you're saying? That's uh, that's cumulative. That'll be the the total number. When our medical school is fully mature, there will be roughly 440 students attending. But for 80, excuse me. But there, but that will not be on uh, that will not be until what uh, 2018 mm -hmm. 2016 2017 right but how do but I'd like to know where they're going to go after the first year or two I'd like to know exactly where these approved residencies are you know we, we funded this program helping you fund the program hoping that the students would be staying in the state of Florida and I know it's not up to you because it depends on the match, but they need to have accredited places to apply to. Do we have now for this first class graduating 
you think that they're going to be able to be, all 80 are going to be able to be matched with the program here in the state of Florida? Uh, uh, Madam Governor, the first graduating class will be 40 students. That'll be next year. No, will, I'm sorry, the second yeah. one. Yeah, I'm sorry. The and they one. will have, uh, there are 40 new residencies that are being developed by our affiliates. Uh, we already have 12 to 14 students, uh, 12 to 14 residencies that have already been created, largely at uh, Baptist West. And uh, we're confident that we will keep our commitment to the board. Now, I, I just want to clarify for the board that that tuition differential dollars are not going into uh, the medical school initiative. And um, the medical school initiative has been basically fully funded by the state legislature, which has kept uh, its commitment right, to right. the board and to the university, and we intend to keep our commitment to the board and to the state legislature. Thank okay, you. and what about the students in China, Mark? Do you get out-of-state funding for them? We do not get any funding from the state university system uh, for those students from China. Uh, the undergraduate students pay a rate that is, uh, that is higher than Chinese standards, but lower than our out-of-state funding because this is a program that is fully operated uh, on revenue that is generated through the program, again, consistent with state uh, regulations. Now, the good news is that as a consequence of our presence in Tianjin, uh, we have a significant number on scale of graduate students uh, from China who follow us home upon their undergraduate graduation and pay full out-of-state uh, tuition. Uh, to the university for their graduate educations. And that obviously is very helpful in terms of us being able to balance the budget for our graduate education in the face of the significant cuts that, that, that we've taken. Right, right, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thanks. Um, Chairman Colson. Yes, sir. Um, with the exception of the 2012-13 tuition differential requests and capital improvement fee requests, which will be the purview of the Board of Governors Budget and Finance Committee. I will move to approve um, the FIU University Work Plan associated with the 2012-13 academic year. Second. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, I just would like to thank all of you for coming. Great presentation and a very impressive group of graduate students and faculty and um, great, great, um, great presentation, and I um, look forward to seeing you move forward in some of the objectives that you've got laid out here. I also think it might be appropriate at some point where we can discuss some of the long-term plans. We didn't spend a lot of time on that due to constraints. We will be coming back in September, uh, but between now and September, I hope we have a chance to um, have, a, have a little more dialogue on that um, individually as members of this, this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.